Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So when do we say that an organism is genetically modified? Now based on whatever we studied in the last two slides, we can say that a mod an organism can be genetically modified by following the following simple steps. First is identification of DNA with desired genes. First of all, we should know which is the desired gene or which is our gene of interest. And we have to locate that gene on the DNA. And then we have to extract piece of DNA with the desired gene and for this extraction what do we need we will take help of the DNA scissors and which which molecules act as DNA scissors the restriction enzymes help to cut DNA and we cut it in such a way that the piece of DNA contain the desired genes so once that is done then formation of recombinant DNA takes place now how this happens this happens when the cut piece DNA that is the piece of DNA which we cut just now in step 2. So the cut piece DNA will combine with the vector DNA that is the vehicle DNA which is nothing but the plasmid DNA. Now these two combine to form the recombinant DNA which is also known as RDNA. So that is recombinant DNA. Now once the recombinant DNA is formed then it is introduced into the host inside the host cell and inside the host cell this recombinant DNA will start to produce clones that is it will start to replicate and then we say that the multiplication of our DNA starts taking place in the host and enzyme polymerase DNA polymerase help in the process of the replication. And then what happens? This RDNA gets transferred to the progeny. So we see that the organism gets genetically modified as well as the progeny also gets genetically modified. So any organism which gets genetically modified is known as transgenic. That is an organism which is being genetically modified by introduction of a foreign gene inside its body. So that is called transgenic whereas an organism which is not genetically modified is not transgenic. So here in this picture you can see this is a cotton which is transgenic that is this cotton plant has been uh, genetically modified so that it can protect itself against insects, against insects and pests. So we will talk about it later and this is the non-transgenic type of cotton. So here also you can see this, the, looking at the picture you might be surprised that from outside it looks like a banana but inside you see a corn. So these, this is how the organisms get genetically modified. So it is not only the animals which get genetically modified, a lot of genetic modification is done even on the plants. So you can actually uh, mix and match the genes of different plants. So you can have the outer part like a banana and the inner part like a corn. You can even have the corn kernel of different colors because you what you do is you basically change the genes you just insert some new genes and that is how the color of the kernels change you can also have uh, a combination of an apple and a tomato maybe it is an apple from outside and, and a tomato from inside so all these weird things which you might see that is nothing but a result of genetic modification so now we will talk about the tools for genetic engineering in little more detail. As we saw in the previous 2-3 slides that what exactly happens in this entire process and we saw that there are a couple of enzymes without which we cannot even think of uh, the process of genetic engineering like the restriction enzymes, DNA ligase, DNA polymerase. So they all play very important roles in the process of genetic engineering. So let us see what were the important tools for genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is also termed as recombinant DNA technology. Now by now I think all of you would have understood why it is called recombinant DNA technology or RDNA technology. Why is that? That's because this entire process of genetic engineering happens with the formation of our DNA. So we extract a particular gene or a desired gene from one organism and then we introduce that gene into another organism. But we cannot do it directly. So how do we do it? We first extract the desired gene, then we create a recombinant DNA with the help of a plasmid DNA. Now once the recombinant DNA is being created, Created, then the recombinant DNA is introduced inside the host organism or the target organism. 
So formation of recombinant DNA or RDNA is very critical here. Without the formation of RDNA, this, uh, the process of genetic engineering cannot take place. So that is why genetic engineering is also called recombinant DNA technology. So some of the important tools of genetic engineering are restriction enzymes. So we already saw that they are going to be very important because they are the ones which act as DNA scissors. That is they help in cutting DNA. Vectors, the plasmid DNA which we, we saw that it acts as the vehicle DNA which helps to carry the uh, cut piece of DNA into the host organism. So vector is equally important. Ligase enzymes. Now these enzymes will actually help to stick things. So they act as glue. So without these enzymes, the DNA pieces which are being cut by the restriction enzymes, they cannot be joined back. So when we say that the recombinant DNA is being formed, how is it formed? When a small cut piece DNA is attached to the cut plasmid DNA. So how are they joined together? So that linking is done by the ligase enzymes. Host organism, extremely important. Without the host organism, what will we do with the RDNA? We need a target organism. I mean, in fact, the existence of the target organism is the motivation for the entire concept of genetic engineering. So can you think of uh, engineering with the genes of the jellyfish if you do not have a target organism, since you have a frog or a mouse, that is why you actually take out or extract a gene from the jellyfish and then try to put it inside that organism. So presence of a perfect organism is also important. Polymerase enzymes. Now even now, even after the DNA or the gene is being introduced and then the polymerase enzymes. Now, even after the recombinant DNA enters inside the host organism, so the multiplication or the replication of the uh, DNA is important. And in that replication helps the DNA polymerase enzyme which is present in the host cell. So that means these are some of the important tools without which the process of genetic engineering cannot take place. So now what we will do is we will talk about each of these tools in detail one by one. So we will first talk about the restriction enzymes where we will see how exactly the restriction enzymes work. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.